This lecture was delivered during the annual congress of the Sri Lanka College of Radiologists. The three st strategies that we have is risk factor modification, exercise and cardiovascular rehabilitation, the use of drugs and invasive strategies like angioplasty and stenting. The choice of treatment would depend upon the Rutherford classification. A category 0 patient is a patient with no symptom, one who has mild claudication, two who has moderate claudication, three has severe claudication, a patient who basically finds it difficult to go on with normal activities, four is rest pain, five with minor tissue loss and six with major tissue loss. For category 1, you would ask the patient to change his lifestyle to ensure he stops smoking, controls his diabetes, controls his diabetes, hypertension and controls his lipid profile. For moderate claudication, we would give a drug called Clocilestazol and of course antiplatelet drugs are given to both the category 1 and category 2. The category 3, 4 and 5 and 6 would require intervention in the form of angioplasty and stenting or a surgical bypass. Now we would go on with the guidelines that have been given by SIR to ensure that we practice evidence-based medicine. Let us start by the intrarenal artery. We are not going to the iliac vessels but the outer between the renal artery and the bifurcation. SIR guideline states that percutaneous angioplasty has been performed on a small number of patients with excellent results. Patients with severe focal stenosis with otherwise minimal disease have the best clinical disease results. So we have a patient who's got a nice focal stenosis in the intrarenal aorta. This is a patient who will do well. Treatment of patients with severe diffuse disease of the outer is not advocated. Now this is again an important thing to understand. Your wire will go across this lesion, but just because your wire goes, remember that the end result of treatment is not always favorable in terms of restenosis at the end of three years. Now let us classify intrarenal aortic lesions. One, we have the category 1 lesions, which are short segment lesions, less than 2 centimeters of the intrarenal abdominal aorta, with close to normal aorta both above and below the lesions. Category 2 lesions are medium length, that is 2 to 4 centimeter lesions of the intrarenal abdominal aorta, again with hardly any disease in the segment below that or above that. So category 3 lesions are long segment lesions greater than 4 centimeters or an aortic stenosis with evidence of atheroembolic episodes or a patient who has a stenosis and presents to you with a blue toe syndrome or a patient who has got a 2 to 4 centimeter lesion with significant atherosclerotic disease of the outer. Category 4 lesions are lesions where the outer is occluded, where there is no stenosis but is a total occlusion and or an aortic stenosis associated with an aortic aneurysm. Now this is a diagrammatic way to represent this uh, categories. So we have category 1 which is a focal stenosis with a near normal outer. We've got category 2 which is a 2 to 4 centimeter stenosis again with a close to normal outer. Then you've got category 3 where you have got a 2 to 4 centimeter lesion but with associated diffuse disease of the outer or you have a lesion which is more than 4 centimeters in length. Then you've got category 4 
where you have an aneurysm associated with a focal stenosis at the outer or a total occlusion. Remember, category 3 would also include cases where there is focal stenosis with associated blue toe syndromes. Now, why is this important? Now, this is important because category 1 lesion, that's a focal stenosis, or category 2 lesion, which is a stenosis of 2 to 4 centimeters with a normal aorta, are lesions which have good results by angioplasty and now let's look at the strategy you would use to treat category 1 and category 2 lesions. Now suppose we have a focal stenosis just above the iliac bifurcation, then you would have to use a technique called the kissing balloon technique. Now if you have a stenosis which is higher up, then your strategy would be to use just one balloon and one stent. So in a lesion above the bifurcation, you take a wire from the right groin and from the left groin. You take a balloon simultaneously across both sides and dilate them together, deflate them and come off. And then you would have to take a stent similarly from both sides. The diameter of the stent would be the size that would be ideal for your common iliac arteries and then you would simultaneously deploy them and get a result which is acceptable. On the other hand, when you are working with a stenosis which has got at least 2 centimeters of normal outer below the stenosis or if you have got 2 centimeters of outer above the iliac aortic bifurcation then you have to use a single balloon, deflate it, use one stent that would go for the diameter of the outer. And most of the time it's 14 to 16 mm self-expanding stent of a result which is acceptable. Now look at this lesion. This is a focal stenosis of the outer which has been treated by angioplasty and stenting. Or another example where we have a stenosis close to the bifurcation where we would take wires from both sides and then do a dilatation and stenting and you have a result which is like this. Now these are some of the results of treating infra aortic aortic stenosis by angioplasty and stenting and if you look at this you will see the 4 year patency is close to 75%. The two-year patency is up to 90%. Now, all of these, like we said, are basically patients who have got a Category 1 or a Category 2 lesion. 